Welcome to the big interview on TCR Radio with me, Steve Lodge. Now, a few weeks ago, I played a track on my funk show that appears on my personal funk playlist. And while it isn't funk, it clearly has come from the roots of rhythm and blues that I really love. The track was so popular and that even the artist herself got in touch to humbly say thank you for playing her music. Well, we got chatting and she agreed to come on the radio here at TCR with us and talk about her music. So I'd like to welcome twice Grammy nominated singer Shay Chambers to TCR Radio. Hey, how are you doing? How are you doing, Steve? I'm doing really well. And I guess the sun must be just rising now over Los Angeles because it's about 7 a.m. where you are. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. It's early. Yeah. Now, um, thanks for agreeing to come on TCR Radio. We're delighted to have you here. And uh, over the next sort of 30 minutes, we're going to play a couple of your tracks. And we're just going to chat about you, your career and uh, what's coming up for you. Are you good for that? I'm good. I'm really good. But real quick, I want to say thank you so much for, you know, doing the interview with me and for playing my music to begin with. Um, I love your show. I listened to the whole and, you know, the whole uh, show and really wasn't familiar with you. But now, um, you know, thanks so much for, for, you know, for everything. That's no, that's a pleasure. Now, I mean, you're in L.A. now, but you're originally, I think, from Kentucky. Is that right? No, actually, I was born in Kentucky. I was raised in Detroit, Michigan. So I was raised around, you know, the R&B, Motown, all that kind of music. And yeah, so I was really raised in, in Detroit. Um, I mean, you've ended up in Los Angeles. And uh, to me, it seems like a lot of people in America will migrate towards L.A., New York, or maybe even Nashville, um, probably because they see it as a necessary step to uh, kickstart their career. How was it for you? For me, it was, I felt like I lost my challenge in Detroit, that I had, you know, done a lot of things there, and I kind of was looking for another bigger challenge, so, you know, I kind of picked up and went to L.A. I drove out with $500 in my pocket and my car, and I, you know, just cruised across the country and ended up in LA. I have a lot of friends that are here. So, you know, it wasn't like I came out all by myself. I had friends that were already here that told me, you know, this is what's going to happen when you get here. It's not going to be like in Detroit where, you know, and being on the road, I was on the road as well, um, you know, touring all over the United States and some of the Midwest and maybe central, I guess you could say more central uh, America. So, you know, it's LA and New York, I think are a different animal because when you, when you go to either one of those places, you have to know that maybe you're not going to be performing all the time. You may have to get a job. You know, they have a saying here when people say I'm an actor, they'll say, well, what restaurant do you work in? <laughs> So, you know, it's just, it's the nature of the beast, I guess. So that was what it was for me. And was your your first break, was that back in Detroit? Uh, well, I worked a lot. I was, I worked um, in clubs. I started at 18 and I was a dancer for years before that, you know, all through high school, junior high. And and uh, I was in a couple of uh, little dance companies they were local dance companies but you know I did a lot of dance first and then I started doing musicals and um, in school in high school and then I wanted to go to Juilliard uh, in New York but that didn't work out so I ended up on the road and there were a lot of touring bands back at you know at that time and so I did that for a while and you know bit by the bug so my first break was actually when I came here. My real, you know, actual uh, uh, break was when I sang Endless Love. So I sang Endless Love in the film Endless Love and worked with Lionel Richie and um, a few other people at that point. I was working with Barry White, who was producing me at the time, and uh, just a few other people. Um, I worked with a great producer back then was Leon Ware, and he produced uh, Marvin Gaye. So, you know, I was around a lot of really great people. But when I came here, I decided I was going to work for record labels, whatever, if I had to work a day job. So I ended up working at Capitol Records for a while. 
And then I went from there to a recording studio that I was a receptionist for uh, called MCA Whitney, and it was in Glendale, California, which is really Los Angeles. But um, that's where I met, you know, Barry White and just a number of people that were coming in and out of that studio. So I met my manager there and, you know, and the, the arranger that um, – sort of put me under his wing and so I did a lot of things from just doing that I wanted to be you know around it so I said well if I have to work a day job I'm going to be around music people so that was what it you know was for me and I mean those the names that you're dropping in there I mean just extraordinary names aren't they and um, is, is that the sort of thing that inspires you to achieve more did you feel maybe you lost your own creativity or did you learn a lot from those guys no, I really learned a lot. I was sometimes like a deer in the headlights, even though I tried to act like I wasn't. But no, I really, I loved being around it. I got to see uh, Aretha Franklin record live in the studio, um, you know, because she was one of my idols growing up. And so I actually asked uh, Chuck Jackson, who was the producer, one of the producers on her record at the time, I said, can I just sit in the control room if you know if that's okay i just want to be around you know and her and see um you know what's really what she does and you know what's really going on with the real big you know heavyweights and so i got to you know i got to do that and and um you know a lot of and i have a lot of friends who are um have pretty successful and so you know just being around it was great for me you know, that's how I really started out. I mean, Aretha Franklin never came to the UK because um, I know she was uh, afraid to fly in. Uh, have you played in the UK? I have not. I've been in uh, South America. Yeah, tip of South America. I've been in uh, Asia. So I played in Japan. And no, I have not been to Europe. I, I wish I could say that I had been, but I have not. I'm pretty sure your time will come. <laughs> I hope so. That's good. Um, I do hope so. Shay, let, let, let's play some music. And um, this uh, is one of your tracks, which has been suggested by your other half, Jerry. Um, okay. main, mainly because it's one of his mother's favorites. Now, she's a woman with some music pedigree of her own, isn't she? Oh, yeah. She's incredible. Incredible. She does... Uh, more of a jazz style and a lot of standards but in you know her style of music she is on top and she's uh she's been named the first lady of song in toledo ohio so uh yeah she's she's incredible well let's give her a name check oh she's uh, jean holden Okay, um, so Gene Holden. Gene Holden. So, uh, hey, it, maybe Gene's listening. Uh, so let's play this track, and uh, it's "She Can Have You Back" by Shea Chambers. Roots can drive me crazy Like Jekyll and Hyde I'm tired of broken promises And playing all your games Last night when we were making love You said your ex has name Now she's knocking at the door She's come to get a man Why she wants you back I'll never understand She can have you back she can have you back She can have you back She can have your eyes and your home is nice I'll even help you pack She can have you back She can have you back She can have the fights and your only nights You're nothing but a better Never give your only take. Yeah, your ex is on the phone. 
and having such a fit. You can run to her, cause I don't give a sh. She can have you back. She can have you back. She can have you back. She can have your eyes and your home nice. I'll even help you pack. She can have you back. She can have you back. She can have the fights and the only nights. He's all yours. Oh, she's calling you again and having such a fit. Go and run to her, cause I don't give up. She can have you back. She can have you back. She can have your lies and your home and nights. I'll even help you pack. She can have you back. She can have you back. She can have the fights in the only night. She can have you back. She can have you back. She can have you back. She can have your lies in the only night. Ah, that was She Can Have You Back by Shay Chambers, and Shay is with me on the line. Um, we spoke before that last track about Jerry's mum, uh, Toledo's first lady of song, and um, female empowerment is something that's incredibly important to you, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Most definitely. Uh, you know, I, I really feel like, you know, women have sort of been uh, coming up, you know, with some of the people like Taylor Swift and these younger performers, um, Demi Lovato, who um, she's incredible and has gone through some things on her own. And, you know, a lot of it is because of the insecurities that women have been sort of swept under the rug. And I feel like sometimes even in my own, uh, in my own career, in my own you know, way I was never taken seriously at times and sometimes taking people take take you so seriously that they want to control you. So, yeah, I think women are stepping up and I think that it's being a lot more accepted. I think the world is really changing, don't you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, the Me Too campaign got an awful lot of traction, didn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah, bringing down Harvey Weinstein, um, even Jeffrey Epstein, you know, which has been he's been tied closely to UK's high society. And so, so you really see things right. changing? I do. I, I think that, that um, it's giving women a lot more uh, of a voice. Because, as you know, years ago, if, if somebody came forward and said, hey, I was, you know, I was molested or raped by this person who was very powerful, like um, Harvey Weinstein, let's say, for instance, and they weren't taken seriously. And then, you know, some of the questions that, you know, are asked, well, what did you do to make him do that? So, you know, and, and the answer is probably nothing. I was just being nice or, you know, and so I think that women are being taken a lot more seriously these days and I just think in in all cases with uh, different you know different backgrounds and um, genders and you know there's so much change in the world and I think that a lot of the reasons why things don't change as quickly as we like them to change just out of fear that you know yeah, a woman's going to come along and become president <laughs> in our country, you know, which somehow makes people afraid. And I don't know why, but I think it's coming through differently now. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, let's hope. Let's hope. Yeah. I mean, let, let's be fair here. Um, you jumped in a car with $500 and set off to LA and created a career for yourself. Um, and you got you, you acquired two Grammy nominations along the way as well, didn't you? Um, yeah, but you know, the funny thing is that it took a long time. I, I was actually surprised by a phone call uh, from a friend of mine who's a uh, producer, uh, Alan Hewitt. He worked with Earth, Wind & Fire, and he's worked a lot with a lot of other uh, artists as well. But he called me and said, hey, I voted for you because, you know, he's a voting member of NARIS, which I don't know people understand how that works but there's you know you have to be a voting member of NARIS which is really the Grammys 
And I thought he was joking. And I said, voted for me for what? And he said, best new artist. And, you know, so it was kind of a surprise to me. But I, my songs at the time from this last record was doing uh, really well. And I guess it was recognized more online uh, than it was, you know, from, from getting airplay, which I, you know, I really don't know how that happened. But anyway, I, I was nominated for Best New Artist and I was in the top 10 out of I don't know how many submissions. But then the next year I was nominated again for a duet that I did with Jose Feliciano. So two years in a row, it was it was um, pretty remarkable, but it took a little while. <laughs> it took a while. Hey, but that's just an amazing achievement. And, um, you know, we're talking about empowering women and, um, you know, you, you are something of a role model, I suspect. Wow, well, I, I don't know about that, but hopefully that would be nice to think so. I think so, I guess. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I mean, there are some exciting things coming up for you too, aren't there? There's uh, some new music and um, I've heard whispers of a documentary. Yeah, there's a plan to do a documentary. Um, you know, everything got put on hold and without, you know, without saying everything got put on hold and there are still plans to move forward. But, uh, you know, we're hoping soon and yeah, we're going to try to do this documentary and and talk about all the things that I've done in my life, um, you know, things I've done here in L.A. And I don't know if you happen to read that I did a, it was called a Pro Jam here every week for a few years. And it was, you know, anybody and everybody that was popular at the time. Uh, I performed with. I was in the house band. Uh, it was called the China Club Pro Jam. And the uh, founder of the Pro Jam just passed away this past last year, uh, 2019. And, but he brought the music scene to LA that was incredible at the time. So, you know, I did that. And, and uh, you know, a lot of just a lot of great things in my life. So we're going to be able to hopefully, you know, talk about that and, and do some, you know, show some pictures and some stories and, you know, all those kinds of things. So that's the hope. Sounds great. And uh, how about new music? New music, yep. We're, we're getting ready to do mu new music. But right now, because of everything, um, you know, the writing sessions have been put on hold as well. So uh, I've been writing on my own, but, you know, I'd like to collaborate with somebody to, you know, how you go in and tweak a song and you might have a good idea, but you bring in a great collaborator and becomes a, a great song. So I've been doing that on my own, but um, again, everything's kind of put on hold for a little bit. But yeah. Again, that's, yeah. The, I mean, COVID. Uh, the, the, it's, it's been horrific, hasn't it, to the creative arts in particular? Um, yeah. I mean, did you have a, a you know, shows that you've had to cancel? How bad has it hit you? Oh, it's everything got canceled, and uh, you know everything. There's no, there's no live music. There really are no uh, recording sessions. I did one recording session, but it was. It was so crazy. It was uh, myself and another singer who I work with a lot um, here, and they wanted us to, you know, do some background parts and some feature parts on a song that, you know, songwriter friend. And um, <laughs> the the engineer kept running around from microphone to microphone, spraying it. So you know, it's everyone's a little bit afraid to you know, to do that. But unless you have your own studio right now, uh, we don't have a home studio that, you know, I can record in, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's really shut down everything. And in fact, the other day I was reading from the recording Academy that it says they're saying that, um, you know, the industry of music is really going to be the last ones to go back to work. And it's interesting when I tell people that, you know, people that are lay people that don't do music or they're not in um, the industry of, you know, TV or film or anything like that. And then, you know, they'll say, what do you mean you're not, you're not going to be able to work? And, you know, when you say, well, to do a live show, you have to have a crowd um, unless you do something virtually. But, you know, you just can't have a live crowd and people aren't doing live shows 
So that said, everything is canceled. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. It's a, it's a it's a really tough time for everyone, isn't it? Because I think there is there is going to be this change, isn't there? And how how people, yeah. well, they talk about consuming music, and I was going to ask you actually about because everything's about digital downloads now, and not you know I know you had your album, but n- nobody really goes out and buys yeah. an album anymore, do they? Uh, it doesn't seem like it. It's, I mean, you can put an album out, but people are going to pick their favorites, don't you think? Mm, yeah. And then that way, yeah, they can download their favorite songs. And maybe if you do an album with 12 songs, maybe they only like, you know, three or four of them. Those are the ones that are going to play. So that's what I think. I don't know. So I'm not, I'm not really sure. Yeah, well, we had, we had Ed, Ed Sheeran over here with a, a recent album, and there were so many downloads of the album that each of the tracks uh, filled the top ten uh, UK hit parade. Yeah, so he, he had wow, he had number one to number ten. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, that's good to know. It's like Taylor Swift did the same thing, you know, where she put out an album and, you know, right during this time and she's promoting it. So, um, you know, good for them to do that. And I want to learn how they did it because we all, whoops, we all have to reinvent ourselves, <clears throat> I think, now with the way things are. It's, that's the whole that's the whole dilemma with music is I see so much, many of my friends are – they're very, um, they're very sort of uh, dismayed with everything that's happening. Don't know how to how to move forward because we've been doing it for this one way for so long. Yeah. So you know, what do you do? You have to figure out. Oh, what do I do now? You know, if you do a virtual thing, are you going to make money? You know, how can you ask people? Can you pay? Because I had a, a text message the other day from. Uh, a bass player friend and that I worked with a few times and and he said you know I'm doing a a show on virtually online on wherever it was and he was charging ten dollars so you know where do you find that that audience that's going to pay that ten dollars if it's not your musician friends because they've worked with you or they've seen what you do maybe they won't go pay ten dollars I don't know it's really it's a new uh, dilemma, I think, for for some people who aren't Ed Sheeran or you know Taylor Swift or Beyonce, who has a a visual album now called uh, Black Is King. I don't know if you know about that. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it's a whole new world of um, getting music out there now. So. Well, look, let's let's play some music now, shall we? Uh, a song I've played on the Funk Show before, and um, it is a really classic uh, track from you. Uh, great funky, funky beat to it. Uh, I won't give up on love by Shade Chambers. I'm not 
It's a, great, it's a great song and it's like I said it's ended up on my playlist uh, but as a, as a funk uh, aficionado myself that yeah it, it's got a, it's got rhythm and blues it's got it's got great guitar um, I really love it I just love the rhythm the bass line um, it's a cracking song um, look Shay yeah. it, it's been really good talking to you I know you're going to get through all of that and there are some exciting times ahead for you for sure and we'll we'll be keeping an eye on that and we look forward to that new music because um, whether it's funk or not it will certainly be played on my funk show um, but I would okay. like I would like to end uh, this uh, interview with uh, by playing the track actually that kind of brought us together yeah uh, which was uh, Don't Hold It Against Me I mean uh, what can you tell me about that song uh, that was a collaboration song that I wrote with uh, Nikki England, and I think that she actually came up with the initial song idea. I think she was trying to go for a real pop uh, feel for it. So, you know, working on that at the time uh, together with Olivier Roulon, who was from France. He's um, he was my producer during a lot of you know a lot of this stuff that I did. So that's where that came from. She was really trying to go in a pop direction. And I think that's one of the more pop songs that I have done. So, you know, that's basically all I can say. We wrote a pop song. Shay, thanks so much for um, getting up so early and um, talking to us. Uh, It's been really great to have you on the show. It's a pleasure to talk with you and it's great to connect with you. I feel like I have a new buddy overseas. That's good. Thank you so much, Steve. Your show is so great. I'm so honored to be one of your guests and uh, good luck with everything there. And I know we're all being affected by the same thing. So let's, uh, you know, let's all let's all keep moving forward. But thank you again so much. And and uh, hopefully we'll talk again soon. Sounds great. Keep safe, Shay. And let's listen now to Don't Hold It Against Me by Shay King. So don't hold it against me You know that the time 
Just